Hi everybody, this is Lisa and I'm here again to give another English class. In this hour we're going to be um, doing some reading. I put the link up in the Verbling chat so if you want to go and open it, I'm going to put it there again. Um, hi there Aisha, how are you? Did, good. Did you go get some more sun? <laughs> Uh, not really because it was late when I leave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just went biking a little in the neighborhood. Uh huh. Nice. And here I am. Great. Is it still warm? Yes. Okay. I'm great. A, 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 it's a hot, um, not hot. Warm. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's um, 8 o'clock here where I am on the Pacific uh, time zone in Washington State, and it's still light outside, so the sun is probably going to go down in about half an hour or something. Yeah, yeah it was <laughs> so for me, but now it's 11. Yeah, it's late now. Hello. Hi, Aguinaldo. Hello, hi. How are you? I'm trying to live. <laughs> uh, where, where are you from, Aguinaldo? I'm from Brazil. Brazil. Uh, Bahia. Bahia. Uh, a small right. town. A small town next to Salvador. Mhm. Mm okay. Great. Hey, um, Aguinaldo. I have to tell you one of the verbling rules. Okay. You're supposed to have a shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I know I know it's hot in Brazil, but uh, oh, very very hot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what they told me. Okay. But I'm yeah. trying to watch the the, the class. Okay, good. <clears throat> um, Jose, you're in the verbling chat, and I don't know uh, why it's not working. I'm not sure what part of verbling that isn't working for you. Because um, it's working for me, and I was just watching a Brett right before this class, and it was working. So, Jose, what is the problem? What is not working about it? Maybe you can uh, tell me, and then I can tell the developers, the programmers, so they can work on it um, for you. In the past, we have had sometimes um, when certain problems are just for certain countries. So maybe there's certain um, servers or something like that that are affected so um, I saw that you posted it in the last class too but Jose if you could uh, write a little bit more about what's not working for you that would um, be good okay so hi everybody um, let's see we have about six people in the class right now we have room for three more people we can have up to nine people in the Google Hangouts and um, we're going to be reading this hour in the article that I that I just posted um, the, the, article the article is, um, hi Tao, Tao make sure that you uh, close your verbling window so we don't hear the recording. So uh, when you come into the Google Hangouts the best thing to, to do is to just close the verbling window and just leave the Google Hangout window open and then that way uh, we won't hear the recording that's being made right now for the verbling classes. Um, I hear it. Hi. Hi, teacher. I hear you, but uh, at the moment I'm loading uh, the page. So okay. I can okay. answer your question. Hello. Chow, can you close the um, verbling window? Okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that works yeah, better. Yeah, that works better. Oops, still hear some still echo. Hear some echo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so Tao, Tao, there's something yeah. going on. I is the verbling is the window, verbling closed? window closed? No, I, I already closed it. Oh. oh. I don't know why I hear an echo, hear an echo. <laughs> from, your from your microphone. Do you have a do you have, do you have a, headphones? You have headphones? Oh no! no I'm uh, using uh, right uh, from the laptop. Okay. Sometimes, 
sometimes if you're not using headphones, then there's an yeah. echo. Okay. Oh, I see. Sorry for that. But now I'm, I'm half no um, headphones. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna say hi to everybody because I think uh, we just have one more person join us. So we're we are full. And oh no, what happened to Yada? Oh, Yada. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, but sometimes with Verbling um, and the Google Hangouts and your internet connection, the first uh, five or six or more minutes sometimes can be just people coming in and out of the class. And so, like, Yada was in the class, but now she, her internet connection probably slowed down or something, and so she got out and somebody joined in. So that's how it kind of happens. So you, it's good to stick around the first uh, few minutes if you want to see if you can get in. Otherwise, this is a reading class, so lots of people can still um, listen to us. We're going to be reading the article out loud, and I will be discussing some of the vocabulary and it's not such a long article this time. Sometimes I have pretty long articles. Um, it's a shorter article, so I'm hoping that we're going to have time to talk about it a little bit more. Um, it's kind of in the same theme that I've been doing today, which was jobs and the economy and stuff like that. So um, we've already had two classes where we read an article from the New York Times, and then we talked about our uh, work and the economy and jobs in our different countries. And so this one is about status, social status, and how your job, uh, sometimes people get jobs just to try to impress other people. So we're going to talk about what all that means and whether or not you've had that experience. So let's see. I'm going to say hi to everybody and just make sure that your microphones work. So Aguinaldo, I already said hi to you. Hi. Uh, what part of Brazil are you from? What? What part of Brazil are you from? I'm from Bahia. Oh, the, yeah, 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 you told me. Bahia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> okay. I think that you are more tired than me. Yeah, I've been <laughs> up since 6 a.m. and I've been working a lot. <laughs> I am <Okay>. tired. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and Aisha's, uh, her mic's working from Montreal. And Antonio, hello, Antonio. How are you? Hello, Lisa. How are you? Good. Your Hi. microphone sounds good. Igor, how are you doing? <clears throat> Hi. Hello. Sorry. Hi. Uh, some problem with button. I'm okay. doing very well. How about you? <laughs> good. Thank you. Uh, as uh, Aguinaldo says, I'm getting a little tired, but we're going to go through this class, and then I still have more work to do. So I can't go to bed <laughs> yet. <laughs> Not, not so late for you. It's eight o'clock. No, it's not very late. No. But I got up very early, and I worked at my cafe for six or seven hours already. And then I gave a couple of verbling classes already, and I'm just very busy today. So. What do you do on your cafe? Um, I own a coffee shop, and so I go there and do everything that you know, barista, make drinks for people, and just all that stuff. Manage my staff, that kind of stuff. Interesting so. job. <laughs> it's interesting, yeah. I've I've owned it for four years now, so it's good. It's I've done many different things in my life, so it's fun. And it's rentable. Yeah. It's profitable. Profitable, and yes, it is profitable. Yes. Okay. It's not making me rich, but paying the bills, and we pay all <laughs> of our staff and all of our bills, so it's. Good. It's in the red, in the black. We say it's always been in the black. How how much people are working for you? Right now, um, I have I think eleven employees. Oh, so it's a big cafe. No, it's a big well, cafe. No, no, no. <laughs> eleven it's employees. A, it's a yeah, but not uh, all at big. once. Not all at once, though. Uh, okay, um, okay. Yeah, I have a lot. Of, um, mostly people in my town don't want to work full-time, yeah. so most of my employees work between 10 or 12 and 25 hours per week. So we're open, you know, every day, all day long, so we have to have people coming in. They usually have a six, uh, four to six-hour shifts is what they work, usually. 
So we usually have two or three people on at the same time, and when it gets busier in the summer, we will have four, probably four, maybe five, but it's not that big. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Nene, how are you? I am fine, Lisa. How are you? There's a I link am also like tired. Like oh you. yeah. <laughs> did, did you work all day? Yeah, I work all day, and now is it times eleven ten here. And tomorrow I am working also. Oh, at your job? Yeah. Really? On Saturday? How come on Saturday? Um, I have to take care of cells. They are growing. Oh yes, you can't <laughs> let them um, not yeah. grow. Yeah, you got to take care of those babies. <laughs> yes. The cells. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll be up early in the morning for soccer games for my daughter. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, That's Rafael, fun. how are you? I'm fine, fine. Thank you. And you? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, just checking your mic. I just want to make sure everybody's here. Sergio? Hi there. Hello. Sergio or Sergio? Hi. Hi. How do you say, how do you say your name? Sergio or Sergio or how do you say it? Sergio. Sergio. Okay. Good. Yes. Uh, all right. And uh, Shaden, Mohammed. Are you there? Is your microphone on? Hello. Okay. Great. Hi there. Welcome. Hi there. Hello there. Good. Thank you. My first time with you. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, great. Welcome. And uh, tell your microphone's working now. Yeah. Okay, great. I still hear a. Uh, that's okay because you're going to be reading. And then when other people are reading, we'll just keep our microphones muted so then it won't be a problem. Okay? All right. So everybody can uh, mute mute your microphone when we're reading. Uh, we're gonna. I'm going to be reading out loud um, one paragraph at a time. And then I will have people read. So when it is your turn to read, then you can uh, unmute your microphone, and you do that by clicking on the microphone uh, icon up above your Verblink chat. If it's red, you are muted, and I cannot hear you. If it's gray, then I can hear you. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's see. <laughs> yes. All right. Who are you trying to impress? That is the title of the article we're reading. This article I found in Psychology Today magazine. Uh, it's a pop pretty popular magazine here in the United States for people who are interested in, in that topic. Um, so there's lots of good articles in there. Okay, so who are you trying to impress? So the word impress means you're trying to make other people think that you are good, smart, pretty, um, an excellent athlete, something like that. When you are trying to impress somebody, you are trying to make other people think of you as whatever you want them to think of you. Good, strong, handsome, beautiful, something like that. So that's what that word impress means. And uh, the... Uh, Subtitle, <laughs> I forgot the word. Subtitle is How to Escape Status Anxiety. So, status refers to uh, people think it's important, like if being rich, being successful, being intelligent, something like that. What is your status? So, he's talking about here already in the title, we can understand what the article is going to be about. So, you can think about for yourself, do you try to impress other people like your parents or your boyfriend or girlfriend or your friends, people like that. And he's going to help us understand how we can escape um, being nervous. So anxiety is when you are nervous or worried or you're thinking about it a lot. So some people, maybe not you, but some people, um, they're really worried about what other people think about them and they try to do things to manage that. So let's see what he has to say. I've always wanted a job that sounded cool to my friends, said a student on one of my recent courses on career change at London's The School of Life, 
founded by the philosopher and author Alan de Botton. I don't know why they put that there. Um, what was really after? Social status. Okay, Aguinaldo, you can uh, read that paragraph again. I read first just so you guys can hear um, my pronunciation and so you can listen and read along, and then I have you read the same paragraph. So you practice your pronunciation. Okay, okay. so come on. Uh huh, go ahead. I've, I've always wanted a job. It sounded good to my friends, said a student of one of my recent curves on a carry chain to the London the School of Life, founded by the philosopher and author Elena Borrow. What was he really after? Social status. Yeah, social status. Okay, something sounded cool. So he's looking for something, a job that other people think is good. So that's kind of a funny thing. He wants this per this comment that the student said is he shows that he cares about what other people think about what he's doing. And this is what we know as social status. When people think that you are whatever, wealthy, rich, you know, something like that. If you have a good job, that means you're better than people with bad jobs. So it's kind of like your status in the society. And some people think that that's uh, very important. Okay. Uh, take that out. All right. So I think pretty much you guys probably understand those words. If you don't understand one of these words when we're reading or something, just ask me and I will be happy to explain it in different words. Uh, courses are just the classes. Uh, career change. So this particular person who wrote this article, he talks to people about changing their jobs, changing their careers, how to find the jobs that you like better that are more what we call fulfilling. Okay, so that's why he's writing these types of articles. Um, right here, this is kind of an English uh, phrase that we use. What was he really after? That means what was he really um, saying with this? What does he really want um, this person here who made this statement? So if you're after something, it's like, what do you want? Okay, he wants social status. So he wants people to think he's successful. In fact, the desire for status is one of the most common rewards that people seek from their jobs, perhaps only second to money. But if you are on the search for fulfilling work, it is worth thinking about exactly what status means to you and whether or not it does you good. Okay, Aisha. In fact, the desire for status is one of the most common rewards that people seek from their job, perhaps only second to money. But if you are on the search of fulfilling work, it is worth thinking about exactly what status means to you and whether or not it does you good. Yeah. All right. So their desire. Desire is something that you want. If you desire something, that means you want it. So wanting status is, is one thing that people uh, want or look for when they're looking for a job. So not just the money. So it's only second to money, perhaps. Um, but fulfill, they're looking for what does it mean to other people. Like, for example, if you're a lawyer or a doctor rather than just a waitress or a bartender or something like that, people are thinking about those things. But he says, if you are on the search for fulfilling work, can somebody tell me what that means, fulfilling work? What would that mean? Uh, do you guys understand that word, fulfilling? I mean, I think um, this one meaning that uh, on on time after the job. Yeah, what kind of work would it be? Full time job. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to hear you, Tao. I didn't quite understand you. The the microphone noisy. Say it okay. again. Um, I think fulfilling job a word it in uh, the similar to the word uh, full time job. Correct. Uh, yeah, it's like the kind of job that you like. So if you have fulfilling work, it means you are the type of work that we say fulfills you. 
it means it makes you happy, it gives you meaning in your life, it's um, important to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. So, um, I'm going to mute your microphone again. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. All right, still, Tao, can you mute your microphone? Yeah, I already mute. Yeah. I just um, unmute if uh, I say something, and then I will mute uh, again. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I hear a background noise still, and I can't mute it. Okay. So, um, fulfilling work. So, this is what this guy talks about, is how do we find work? that we really like because a lot of times obviously people are in jobs just for the money or because they need to do something but it's not necessarily fulfilling fulfilling is a big uh, word keyword that people are talking about in the United States a lot um, and we can talk about that after this you know in after we finish reading the article about whether or not uh, fulfilling work is something that's being talked about in in your country as well Okay, so doo -doo 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 -doo, next paragraph. Career status comes in two. Oh wait, somebody read that. I'm getting confused. Hold on, Antonio, why don't you read that? Did you read that already? Yes. Oh. Yes, that's the part I read. Okay, so I'm sorry. Yes. I told you I'm I'm getting tired. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> career status. <laughs> career status comes in two varieties. One is the status we get from having a prestigious job that is admired and revered by others, such as being a lawyer, surgeon, top athlete, or professor. The chance to impress people with your high powered career is an alluring prospect. Like the ancient Romans, we still have a strong yearning for reputation and glory. Okay, Antonio. Give me that. Okay. Career status comes in two varieties. One of these status we get from having a prestigious job that is as, that is ad admired and revered by others, such uh, as being a lawyer, sergeant, to top a level, or professor. Mm -hmm. The chance to impress people with your high-powered career is an alluring prospect. prospect. Like the ancient Romans, we still have a strong yearning for reputation and glory. Yeah. So career, that talks about your job, your career, comes in two varieties. A variety is a, you know, two kinds. Types. Um, yeah, two types. That's another word. Good. Uh, one is that we get a uh, status from a prestigious job. So that's the United States, for example, a prestigious job is one that's not, not everybody can get. It Maybe it takes you a lot of years of studying or you have to be very intelligent or something like that. And those are considered... Money. Yeah, you make a lot of money. <laughs> no, and you should, uh, and you have to pay in the uh, yes, university. Exactly. For example, <laughs> yeah. for a lawyer, for a surgeon, many yes. years to study in money. money. Yes. Yes, exactly. And once you've finished, then those are known as prestigious jobs. They, they people know you've worked really hard and you've you spent a lot of your own money and a lot of your years, many t much time, um, working to have that kind of job. So, uh, people often in the United States, at least, admire and revere that thing. They look up to them. They think that they are very um, intelligent or hardworking or something like that. And these are the types of jobs. Uh, what is it revered? What is it uh, When you are revered, it, it's basically the same as admired. People um, revere you. That means they respect you. They look up to you. They um, yeah. they think you're intelligent. They listen to what you say. You know, yeah. Okay. So if you're a surgeon, for example, people um, look to you and say, "Wow, you're you know you're amazing." <laughs> you know, something you're like that. You're smart. Yeah, you're so smart. I'm not so smart. Yeah, oh, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they believe what you say a lot of times, especially about your topic, like a surgeon. You're probably going to believe what the surgeon says about, um, you know, operating on your heart rather than your your plumber, you know, or something like that. <laughs> so they have knowledge. They have these people, lawyers and surgeons. They have a lot of um, information and 
uh, knowledge that you know a lot of people don't because if unless you have studied those topics you don't really know too much about how to operate on people or how to defend people in a court of law and top athletes similar uh, you might like to play basketball but you know the top athletes who play and make a lot of money and they work really hard and they've spent you know their whole lives doing this they're very skilled so it's also people who have um, skill really good skills that are above other people you know okay so that's um, so that's one way is to get a prestigious job or um, a high powered that's a little bit different um, high powered means you have a lot of power a lot of influence so that could be a lot of times in business or it could also be in government like if you're the mayor of a town or something or a senator or the president of the United States or something like that so um, that's more like a high powered job alluring it means alluring if something allures you it's like you want to go there so these jobs are kind of alluring to certain uh, types of people and he says like the ancient Romans uh, there's a strong yearning yearning also wanting you, you yearn for something it means you really want it you want a good reputation and you want glory so if you watch a lot of movies there's all kinds of movies all the time about uh, people who struggle but then they they come in they have the glory maybe their business became really successful and they uh, made a lot of money or they saved somebody or you know something when you have glory it means people write books about you <laughs> and they write make documentary movies about you that kind of stuff okay the second variety is status based on our position relative to others a famous study in behavioral economics showed that if given a choice between earning fifty thousand dollars a year with everyone else earning twenty five thousand dollars or earning a hundred thousand dollars while others earned two hundred thousand dollars the majority of people would choose the former the former means the first one the fifty thousand dollars so that basically they want to make more than everybody else <laughs> all right hmm. yeah okay Igor the second variety is status based on our position relative to others a famous study in behavioral economics showed that if we given a choice between earning 50,000 a year with everyone else earning 25,000 uh, dollars per year, 25,000 $25, dollars mm -hmm. or earning 100,000 dollars while others earned 200,000 dollars the majority of people would choose the former mm -hmm. And that's that's interesting because that's um, showing this idea of position relative to others. Is your position relative to your friends, to your neighbors, to your colleagues? And what they're showing is that people in this study, um, you can click on it if you want to see the study, I think, right there. Yeah. Um, that people would rather, instead of making $100,000 a year, though other people would be making 200000 uh, they would rather just make fifty thousand dollars a year because they would be making twice as much as everybody else. So that's a status thing because obviously earning a hundred thousand dollars is twice as much as fifty thousand dollars. So you would think that people would be happier making the bigger amount of money, the larger amount of money. But in fact, what's more important, it seems to people, is that they're making more relative to the other people. So rather than less, <laughs> because how they uh, know what is his uh, or her position in life? How you know? You know in comparison with others uh, that is near you. If they yeah. live uh, uh, better or no, and you look and you compare right. uh, every day. So you yes, know. yep, that's what people do. <laughs> yeah, well, some people, <gasps> not everybody, but. It's, the that's most people, saying. I think. Probably the majority. Study, uh, if yeah. studies show, does, uh, if studies uh, true. Studies so show, think... yeah. yeah. Studies show that that's an important um, thing that people think about is how are they relative to other people. So, yeah, that's, of course, why, you know, typically if you have money, you don't live in a poor neighborhood. You go live 
in a neighborhood where you can have a nice house or you have a nice car or something like that. Even though you could live anywhere, you don't have to pay so much. So, yeah. We also care about our relative position in career hierarchies. If you see all your peers climbing the ladder of success, becoming company directors or top managers, yet you remain at the bottom of the ranks, then you may well feel something of a failure and have a desire to join them. Okay, Mina? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we also <laughs> care about... <laughs> we also care about our relative position in career hierarchies. If you see all your peers climbing the ladders of success, becoming company directors or top managers, yet you remain at the bottom of the ranks, then you may feel uh, you may well feel something of a failure and have a desire to join them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that happens, especially like starts out, you know, a lot of times even in school. Um, so if you see all your peers, so those are your friends um, and your colleagues, people in your uh, on your in your company, perhaps hierarchy. You guys probably that's like top down. So there's always a hierarchy, like in companies. If you're um, hired, the you know the first level would be people who aren't very skilled and they don't make very much money, and then you go up. So the higher, um, the more skills you have, the more money you're making, and then all the way to the top, where there's like the directors or the CEOs or something like that. So that's a higher the hierarchy. And um, in the here's a English expression: climbing the ladder of success. So that just means um, moving up in your chosen field or your career. So people in the United States, we have a history. People have these ideas where. Uh, you'll pull yourself up by your bootstraps, which means you can even start out as a very poor person, but if you work hard and you climb the ladder of success, then you will become successful. So that's a big uh, thing that a lot of Americans believe and um, can happen. All right, so basically they're just talking about how you're watching people. So if you're watching all your friends and your colleagues get better jobs, then you might feel like a failure. And you want to, the desire again, find them. You want to also move up. So you're, you're not just, even maybe you're happy doing what you're doing, but if you see yourself relative to other people, you might start thinking, oh, I'm not doing as well. And so you might want to, you know, do something so that you can also move up. Both kinds of status can be an important way to boost our self-esteem. But... As the 18th century philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau warned, this universal desire for reputation in which we judge ourselves through other people's eyes is fraught with dangers. Okay, Rafael? Yes? You want to read that? Okay. Both kinds of states can be an important why the boss or sell esteem? But as the 18th century philosopher Jean Jacques Rousseau warned, this universal desire for reputation, in which we use ourselves through other people's eyes, eyes, is fraught with dangers. Yeah. Okay, so. He's saying that these can boost our self-esteem. So our self-esteem is, think about ourselves, how we feel about ourselves. So if you have good self-esteem, that means you like yourself, you think you're a good person, and you have skills, and you're very happy with yourself. Um, if you have low self-esteem, then you think you're not so good, you're always comparing yourself to other people, and I'm dumb, you know, say things like that to yourself. And to boost it, though, is to make it better. So, um, what we're talking about there, but he says uh, the universal desire for reputation. So, people who um, always want to be improving their reputation, this can be fraught with dangers. That means full of danger. Fraught just means dangers. That's that word, fraught. But that's the phrase. If you hear people talking, you can say it's fraught with dangers. Because um, we're always judging ourselves. 
but really through other people's eyes. We're judging ourselves based on what we think other people are thinking about us. <laughs> we don't really know necessarily, but it's just what we think. We can easily find ourselves pursuing a career that society considers prestigious, but which we are not intrinsically devoted to ourselves, one that does not fulfill us on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, Sergio? Yes. You want to read that? Okay. Uh, we can easily find ourselves pursuing a care that socially considers prestigious, but which we are not intrinsically devoted to ourselves. One that does not fulfill us on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Good. Pursuing. That means so when you say we're pers I'm pursuing a career in medicine, that means I'm, I'm going after uh, a career or I'm working on a career so that you're hoping to get it when you pursue something. You can also pursue people if you're after somebody, like you saw somebody at the club that you liked and you're going to pursue them. That means you're going to ask them out for dinner or to coffee or something like that, see if you can get a date. All right. And what they're saying is sometimes we do these things not because we want to, so it means that we're motivated by ourselves, like it comes from inside of us. That's not really what's motivating us sometimes. What's motivating us or, or you know, making us think that we want to do this is what other people are going to think. So like I said, in the United States, some of the prestigious jobs, the jobs that people look up uh, Look, um, look up to you if you have them are like surgeons, doctors, lawyers, um, famous uh, athletes, or really uh, smart, even smart uh, scientists or entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs who have created businesses that are very successful. Those kind of people are considered uh, prestigious. Okay, but a lot of people go after these, but it doesn't really fulfill them on a day-to-day -day basis. That means like regularly in your life you're not really that happy. So in my teaching, so this guy says this, this guy who's the author of this article, in my teaching I am constantly meeting people who are deeply unhappy about their work despite having apparently enviable careers such as being a photojournalist or neuroscientist. Others in the room can hardly believe that they are miserable in their outwardly impressive jobs. Okay, Shaden. Okay. Okay. In my teaching, I am constantly meeting people who are deeply unhappy about their work despite having apparently invaluable careers, such as being a photojournalist or neuroscientist. Others in the room can hardly believe that they are miserable and they're out worldly impressive jobs. Yeah. So people who are deeply unhappy, deeply just means very. So despite, so that means even though, even though they have apparently, well, it looks like they have a good job, or um, but we don't necessarily know. Enviable, so it looks like they have jobs that other people would envy. That means they would want. So somebody might say like, wow, you're a photojournalist, or wow. Oh, you're a neuroscientist. That's awesome. Um, these people are not happy. They're miserable, which means they do not like doing. Uh, so they feel, you know, whatever, sad, or depressed, or just cranky. <laughs> they don't. They don't like what they're doing, um, even though they have an outwardly. So, out like from the outside, like us looking at them, it looks like they should be really happy because they have this amazing job. Um, but oftentimes they're not. So you we've you can hear stories about that, like movie stars or models or other successful people who seem like they have this great job, but they're actually pretty miserable. It happens a lot with movie stars. Uh, that's why there's so many um, of the tabloid type of magazines that are always reporting on all the problems that the movie stars are having with drugs like, or rela relationships and <laughs> stuff like that. Like, yeah. But, called. like who? Shaden? 
What did you say, Sharon? Like Anna Nicole, I think the actress. Uh -huh. Anna Nicole, she called herself actress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can read yeah, about it a, a lot of times. Yeah, it's an example, sure. But okay. author of the uh, of the article uh, yeah. gave us example only photographer and uh, another job, but uh, but exists people that are not unhappy being surgeon and being a lawyer and being sure. Uh, another. Sure. I mean, I think he just. I mean, he wasn't going to list all the different types. It really is like a personal thing. So what he's saying is, um, so for example, in the United States, um, you can often hear. Uh, people who say, well, I got, I became a doctor because that's what my father wanted for me, right? So if, if your um, father's opinion was very important to you and you're always trying to impress your mom or your dad or your grandpa or somebody like that, um, and you, go, you, you went ahead and you studied really hard and you got this amazing job, but it really wasn't something that you wanted to do. You know, maybe you wanted to be a painter, or maybe you wanted to be a musician, or maybe you wanted to be a teacher, or you know something like that. But you did this job because your father, you know, kind of pushed you or encouraged you, and you knew it would make him happy. So I don't know, Igor, are you have you heard of those stories in your country? Because that's kind of popular here in the United States, especially from uh, wealthier families. Like if you grow up in a family, like the dad is a doctor already, or a lawyer, or a successful business person, then oftentimes uh, that family wants to have their children be just as uh, successful. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I understood. Okay. Uh, I, uh -huh. On TV, uh, I saw movies. I think American movies about that. Sure. Many movies. Yeah. But in our country, all uh, uh, successful people want uh, their children to be uh, politicians, <laughs> <laughs> not uh, not surgeon or a lawyer. <laughs> not uh, this. This is not uh, in trend. Uh, not trendy yeah. professions in our country. But yeah. uh, in trendy uh, trendy professions, politicians are related hmm. to this. Aha! Uh -huh, I see. Okay. So more uh, people who would have influence then, more influence on the Who politics. have ac access to money. Yeah, access to directly. money. Yeah, yeah, sure. And that's true. Um, in, I imagine in different countries there might be different things that are, um, different types of jobs that are seen as more prestigious or beneficial. Or if, if you're a mom or a dad, you would say, yeah, I want my daughter or my son to do that. Like, for example, my mom... Um, one time when I was young, I got braces on my teeth. So the person who puts braces on your teeth to make them straight is called the orthodontist. And orthodontists make a lot of money. And my mom knew that they made a lot of money because she was paying a lot of money for me to have my braces. <laughs> so she was telling me, like when I was 15 probably or something, or 14 maybe, um, you should be an orthodontist, you know, like they make a lot of good, you know, make money, so you should do that. And so so I didn't become an orthodontist, but some um, children might hear that from their parents and think, oh, God, I, yeah, I have to do that, you know, and um, and they do, but then it's not really something that they want to do. Maybe you hate looking in people's mouths or something like that, you know, <laughs> so that's what this guy is talking about. All right. There is a further problem. Once we achieve one status level, another often instantly appears above it. We may aspire, for instance, to be a successful TV producer. But having become the producer of a popular TV show, we might then want to be amongst those who have won coveted awards or who also make feature films. Okay, Tao. There is a future problem. One, we achieve one standard level, another often instantly appears a poet. We may aspire, for instance, to be a successful TV producer, but having become the producer of a popular TV show, we might then want to be among those who have won convicted awards of who also make feature films. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, so once you uh, achieve one level, so you did it, you became successful, there's always going to be somebody above you. <laughs> so you're going to then want to do that. Uh, yeah, coveted means something that people want. A coveted award, like a, a Grammy Award, for example, Academy Awards, those kinds of things. Um, our peer group shifts, so our group of friends. Our peer group shifts, and the status we seek is forever just beyond our grasp. The writer and spiritual thinker C.S. Lewis understood this problem when he said that most of us desire to be a member of an inner ring of esteemed or important people, but we will reach no inside that is worth reaching since there are always more rings within it. Okay. Aguinaldo? Your microphone might be muted. There you oh, go. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I was I was sleeping. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Everybody's tired. <laughs> okay, what have I do? <laughs> okay, our peer group shifts. Oh, I, I have to read. Okay. Yeah, you have to mm, read. <laughs> That's what you're here for. <laughs> Wake up. Okay. Our, our peer group shifts, and they start in that status we seek is forever just beyond our grasp. The writer and the spirit of fact, C.S. Lewis, understood this problem when he said that most of, the, of us desire to be a member of the inner rank of esteemed or important people, but we will reach no inside that's worth reaching since there, there were always more rings we fit. Right. So basically saying the same thing. Every time our uh, peer group or our group of friends or colleagues shifts or uh, changes, then we're forever uh, going be uh, seeking to go just beyond our grasp. Grasp is you can um, where you can hold on to something. So you try to reach for it, but then it's just right beyond, so you can't get there. And this author here that uh, he wrote the. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe series and stuff. Um, he said there's always this inner ring where people want to um, come, where they feel esteem, feel a part of an, a group of important people. But it never happens because every time you go to that one level, there's always the next level. So it's like there's more rings within inside the rings. The lesson may be the simple one that we should not be so concerned about what other people think about us. So start rethinking your attitude to status by asking yourself this question. Why do you, why do you imagine, or no, sorry, who do you imagine is judging your work status? Perhaps family, old friends, or colleagues? Do you want to grant them that power? Okay, a show. I'm going to there. Yes, the, the lesson may be the simple one that we should not be so concerned about what other people think about us. So start rethinking your attitude to status by asking yourself this question. Who do you imagine is judging your work status? Perhaps family, old friends, or colleagues? Do you want to grant them that power? Yeah. So... Basically, the idea is maybe we shouldn't be so concerned about what other th people think about us or what we're doing, so we can rethink. We can think thing over or think about it uh, differently. Uh, our attitude. Your attitude is how you uh, uh, approach something. You can have a positive attitude or a negative attitude. You can be optimistic or pessimistic. So you might want to check your attitude and ask yourself uh, these questions. Like, who do you think is judging you? Like, who do you think cares about what your job is, what you do? And do you want to give them, so that means uh, give them that power? Do you to live your life worried about what all these other people think about what you're doing?
Okay, so that's uh, this guy, Roman, and uh, that was the article. Does anybody have any questions before I start asking some questions? Anybody have anything they didn't understand or they want to comment on the article? This idea is not new uh, in this article. I read right. uh, about this uh, idea in some books that um, uh -huh. you people compare him his themselves with uh, another people or, um, every day. Yes. On the intuitive, uh, uh, on the um, uh, exists too on the. Um, Okay, on the uh, uh, compare uh, 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 they sells. I read yes. about that in, in some books. Right. Yes, this is not a, a new topic. You know, it's not something new that this guy just thought of. It's been around for a long time, and and like you were saying earlier, Igor, it's probably um, universal, meaning everybody in the world at some point <laughs> has probably considered what what does he think about me or what does she think about me um, what do your parents think about your grandparents your kids think about you as a parent you know things like that um, but this particular guy he's writing because he is counseling um, people who are not happy in their jobs and they want to make a change so a lot what of times counseling? Oh, counseling is like advising he's helping okay, them okay. to yeah when you counsel somebody, you advise them or you help them think through um, new ideas or strategies about whatever topic. So in this case, it's about changing. So for example, if, you know, maybe it's very common in the United States that uh, at around 35, age 40, uh, you start thinking about your life and you start thinking, is this really what I want to be doing with my life? And so it's popular these days in the United States for people who are around that age, maybe a little older even, to consider making a change. And that's kind of new because um, in the United States, maybe say 20 years ago, 40 years ago, like my grandparents who are now in their 80s, they didn't think like this. It was just um, get a job, keep the job, and make money and live and they didn't think about what are my possibilities what can I do with my life how do I want to live my life it was just get a job and make money and live and so that has been changing because America is um, wealthy enough you know successful enough that middle-class people and wealthier people now their children um, they have so much at from a young age uh, now they want jobs that are fulfilling. They want to have fun. They want to be creative. They want to be productive. They don't want to just work like in a factory or you know um, something that is not very fun or interesting or challenging. So that's kind of what's happening in the United States, and that's why in other places too. I think in Germany, like in Europe, and in cause this guy works in London, but it's about people who want to make a change in their life and so you have to start thinking like why am I doing this? Am I doing it for me or am I doing it for um, other people? So um, Asia, what, what do you think about the article? Do you see that some people that are doing things just because uh, they think other people will think that they're good or smart or it's good? What do you think? Yes, I think some people do that, but uh, not everyone. I think we like to to be appreciated by others. We like to do job that other we, when they see us, they would ah, he, mm -hmm. he or she has a good job. Yeah, uh, but uh, I think it's not Obviously everyone. Some people yeah. just like certain job and they do it, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Igor, for example, um, are you doing your job because you like it or because you think uh, somebody's going to think something good about you because you have a certain type of job? <laughs> I do my job because they pay me. <laughs> and they pay me not so bad. So yeah. uh, it's relatively a uh, uh, good job. Uh, uh -huh. 
relatively in terms of payment for me. Sure. So that that's why I, I work here. Uh huh. And of course, I like uh, specific of this job to uh -huh. meet everyday people. It's not something boring that I can stand. For example, to stay to I know job. For example, you stay in computer and uh, uh, an, uh, for example work for analytics yes to analyze information and yeah. you tables you and program different pro it's very boring yeah <laughs> so I yeah. don't like this job. right yeah Sergio Sergio do you um, do you work Sergio where did you go might be muted Sergio Uh, okay, okay. Okay, Shaden, how about you? Do you work? Oh, Sergio, you're uh, here. Okay. Yes. Hold yes, on, I Sergio's hear here. Uh, no, yeah, I not do work. You work. I, I no, I not. I only study. What are you studying? Mm -hmm. Yes. What What are you studying? Uh, I am studying business management. Okay, and um, why are you studying that? Mm, because I like uh, business studies, but mm -hmm. but I think <coughs> informatic is better for me. Mm -hmm. You yeah. think you think what what is better? Uh, informatic. Oh, computers. Yes, computers. Okay. But uh, but I decide but by business management. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, are you doing that because of the money or because it's going to um, give you a better job or because uh, somebody else told you that it's better? Mm, to get a better job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's, I think that's um, part of what this guy is not talking about is that um, how you how you understand what a good job is is there's many things and for a lot of people right now it's money good money because if you're mm -hmm. going to work uh, you might as well make as much money as you can so you can do other things but some people um, in the United States at least they are deciding I don't care about the money I want to live my life doing the things that I like even if that means I don't have as much money Yes. So, yeah. Yes, I think I think that's better uh, mm. to do the, the things we are like. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Shaden, what what do you think, Shaden? Yes. Do you think it's good to? Uh, I have a work. Yes. I have a work. I am. I work as a fashion designer. Oh. Uh, I'm like Igor. It's about salary. Uh huh. I am. Uh, um, uh, I I work to because they pay for me. But really, I'm using with my uh, job. I draw some dresses. Uh -huh. I, I uh, I'm dealing directly with the people. Mm -hmm. So I'm using not but about money. Yeah. So you like your job. Yeah. I like yeah. Good. It's full. You could say that it's fulfilling. It's fulfilling to you. You like it. You enjoy it, you like working with the people, designing things, yeah? Yeah, although although I, I, I also study, but I study oh. another major, I study yeah. law. Okay. But, uh, uh, so, I, I, uh, as I told, it's for money and for amuse myself. Yeah. Maybe uh, after graduation, I will follow my, uh, my basic uh, major, the law, the law. Okay. So you would do something else maybe later. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, Ag Aguinaldo, what what do you do? Turn on your turn on your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, I work in, I work in a store uh -huh. and I sell cell phones, computers, oh. laptops. Uh huh. And and I work with music too. I'm a musician. Oh, cool. So, and uh, work with the music is mm -hmm. fulfilled fulfilled to me for me. Yeah, 
It's fulfilling okay. for you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very. I like somewhere to sing. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. I work with as a backing vocal. Oh, cool. Nice. nice. Yeah, that's so great. That's all. I go with <laughs> okay, good night. <laughs> hi, hi, Jake, you joined us. How you doing? I think your microphone might be muted. Yes, it was. Okay. I'm just, I'm just watching. I'm just... Okay. It's hard to hear. I think there's a little bit of background noise. I don't know where it's coming from. There we go. Can you hear Jake, me better? Yeah. Where Where are you from, Jake? Uh, Texas. Texas. <laughs> Great. So what do you do in Texas? Um, I work in a retail store and uh -huh. sell clothing. And wow. I'm also a student uh, at a community college. Uh huh. All right. Well, what are you studying? Um, computer science, so uh, informatic. Uh huh. Cool. Um, so more computer programming than anything else. Uh huh. Is that the kind of job you want to do later? Oh God. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, I used to be. Uh, I used to study music. Yeah. But. I switched to a major that is more that is better with money. Uh, so there's more money in there. Yes. And also, I mean, really, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Nowadays, we have to uh, figure out where, what we can stand. We can say what I can stand to do and make the money, and then maybe you have to do what you really love um, after work. <laughs> so um, sometimes, my, yeah. The, the plan is to. Um, to get settled a little bit for like five years and then start pursuing other things like yeah. hobbies. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of common here in the U.S. to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, our time is up for this hour. I want to thank everybody for coming to Verbling and hand to the class and reading the article and being willing to speak and practice English and think about some of these ideas and share your ideas with everybody else. Guys. Thank you. Okay, have a good Thank weekend, you. everybody. You too. Okay. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It was interesting for us. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you. I am, and I've been working a lot. <laughs> I am okay. tired. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and Aisha's, uh, her mic's working from Montreal. And Antonio, hello. Antonio, how are you? Hello, Lisa. How are you? Good. Your Hi. microphone sounds good. Igor, how are you doing? <clears throat> Hi. Hello. Sorry. Hi. Uh, some problem with button. I'm doing okay. very well. How about you? <laughs> good. Thank you. Uh, as uh, Aguinaldo says, I'm getting a little tired, but we're going to go through this class, and then I still have more work to do, so I can't go to bed yet. <laughs> But not so late for you. It's eight o'clock. No, it's not very late. No. But I got up very early, and I worked at my cafe for six or seven hours already. And then I gave a couple of verbling classes already, and I'm just very busy today. So. What do you do on your cafe? Um, I own a coffee shop, and so I go there and do everything that you know, barista, make drinks for people, and just all that stuff. Manage my staff, that kind of stuff. Interesting so. job. <laughs> it's interesting, yeah. I've I've owned it for four years now, so it's good. It's I've done many different things in my life, so it's fun. And it's rentable. Yeah. It's profitable. Profitable, I mean. yes, it is profitable. Yes. Okay. It's not making me rich, but paying the bills, and we pay all <laughs> of our staff and all of our bills, so it's good. It's in the re in the black. We say it's always been in the black. How, how much people are working for you? Right now, um, I have... A thing. So uh, when you come into the Google Hangouts, the best thing to do is to just close the Verbling window and just leave the Google Hangout window open, and then that way uh, we won't hear the recording that's being made right now for the Verbling classes. Um, I hear it. Hi, teacher. I hear you, but... Uh, at the moment, I'm loading uh, the page, so okay. I can okay. answer your question. Hello. 
Chow, can you close the um, verbling window? Okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Yeah, that works. Yeah, better. that works better. Oops, still hear some echo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so Tao, Tao, there's something yeah. going. I is the verbling window closed? No, I, I already closed it. Oh. I don't know why. I hear an echo. From your microphone. Your microphone. Do you have a? Do you, you have, have headphones? headphones? Oh no, I'm using a uh, voice uh, uh, from a laptop. Okay. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes, sometimes, sometimes if you're not you're using not headphones, headphones, then there's yeah. a there's echo. An echo. Okay. Oh, oh, I see. Sorry for that. that. But that. now I'm I'm have no um, headphones. Okay. Sorry for okay. that. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Okay. So let's see. I'm gonna say hi to everybody because I think uh, we just have one more person join us. So we're we are full. And oh no, what happened to Yada? Oh, Yada. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, but sometimes with verbling. Uh, oh. mm Mhm. Okay. Great. Hey, um, Aguinaldo. I have to tell you one of the verbling rules. Okay. You're supposed to have a shirt on. <laughs> so I know I know it's hot in Brazil, but uh, oh, very very hot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what they told me. Okay. But I'm trying to watch the the, the class. Okay, good. <clears throat> um, Jose, you're in the verbling chat, and I don't know uh, why it's not working. I'm not sure what part of verbling that isn't working for you. Because um, it's working for me, and I was just watching a Brett right before this class, and it was working. So, Jose, what is the problem? What is not working about it? Maybe you can uh, tell me, and then I can tell the developers, the programmers, so they can work on it um, for you. In the past, we have had some times um, when certain problems are just for certain countries. So maybe there's certain um, servers or something like that that are affected so um, I saw that you posted it in the last class too but Jose if you could uh, write a little bit more about what's not working for you that would um, be good okay so hi everybody um, let's see we have about six people in the class right now we have room for three more people we can have up to nine people in the Google Hangouts and um, we're going to be reading this hour in the article that I that I just posted um, the, the, article the article is, um, hi Tao, Tao make sure that you uh, close your verbling window so we don't hear the recording. Hi everybody, this is Lisa and I'm here again to give another English class. In this hour, we're going to be um, doing some reading. I put the link up in the Verbling chat. So if you want to go and open it, I'm going to put it there again. Um, hi there, Aisha. How are you? Did, good. Did you go get some more sun? <laughs> uh, not really, because it was late when I leave. Oh, yeah. I just went biking a little in the neighborhood. Uh huh. Nice. And here I am. Great. Is it still warm? Yes. Okay. I'm great. It's a hot, um, not hot. Warm. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's um eight o'clock here where I am on the Pacific. Uh, time zone in Washington State and it's still light outside so the sun is probably gonna go down in about half an hour or something yeah right now. hello hi Aguinaldo hello hi how are you I'm trying to live 
Uh, where, where are you from, Aguinaldo? I'm from Brazil. Brazil. Uh, Bahia. Bahia. Uh, a small uh, town. A small town next to Salvador. Um, and the Google Hangouts and your internet connection. The first uh, five or six or more minutes sometimes can be just people coming in and out of the class. And so, like, Yada was in the class, but now sh her internet connection probably slowed down or something, and so she got out and somebody joined in. So that's how it kind of happens. So you, it's good to stick around the first uh, few minutes if you want to see if you can get in. Otherwise, this is a reading class, so lots of people can still um, listen to us. We're going to be reading the article out loud, and I will be discussing some of the vocabulary. And it's not such a long article this time. Sometimes I have pretty long articles. Um, it's a shorter article, so I'm hoping that we're going to have time to talk about it a little bit more. Um, it's kind of in the same theme that I've been doing today which was jobs and the economy and stuff like that. So um, we've already had two classes where we read an article from the New York Times, and then we talked about our uh, work and the economy and jobs in our different countries. And so this one is about status, social status, and how your job, uh, sometimes people get jobs just to try to impress other people people. So we're going to talk about what all that means and whether or not you've had that experience. So let's see. I'm going to say hi to everybody and just make sure that your microphones work. So Aguinaldo, I already said hi to you. Hi. Uh, what part of Brazil are you from? What? Aguinaldo? What part of Brazil are you from? I'm from Bahia. Oh, the... yeah, yeah. You told me. Bahia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> okay. I think that you are more tired than me. Yeah, I've been <laughs> up since 6 